this class, um, we are looking at chapter five, cost, volume, profit relationships. Now, next week we'll be in class and we will have chapter six. And then I will provide you all with the study guide that we will go over. Know that the study guide will probably be a lot of the questions in the quiz that will be on the quiz. So I'm not gonna give you the answers. I'll help you with them, but I'm not gonna give you the answers because that's what you're gonna have in the class, okay? So I'll make, I'll try to make the, the, um, the midterm will be very similar to what we're doing on the study guide. How's everyone doing? We have three people in class here, 10 online, awesome guys. Um, welcome to class here. I, we're gonna start off right now. So the cost volume relationships, this is chapter five. So cost volume, what we call profit analysis. So oftentimes we try to figure out the cost of items based on the volume that we create. To simplify these cost, volume, profit calculations, managers typically adopt the following assumptions with respect to these factors. We keep the selling price constant. The price of a product or service will not change as volume changes. We also assume that costs are linear and can be accurately divided into the variable piece and the fixed piece. The variable costs are constant per unit and the fixed costs are constant in total over that relevant range. And in product in companies where we have various products, the mix of products sold remains constant. So in order to do this analysis, we're showing certain key figures, which may or may not be right, but in our case, this is how we have to create the, to make it make sense for us, okay? So, the first objective for this chapter is how changes in sales volume affect the contribution margin and ultimately net operating income. The contribution income statement is helpful to managers in looking at the impact on profits regarding changes in selling price and cost or volume. It's basically focusing on cost behavior. So if we show the sale of bicycles here to be 250,000, and then our variable expenses are 150, we know what we've got available now for our fixed expenses to be 100,000. If in fact our fixed expenses are 80, then that's our operating income, the net, the leftover, okay? So the contribution margin, of course, is gonna be our sales minus our variable expenses. Now, the contribution margin is used first to cover all of our fixed expenses because what, how we derive our contribution margin is our sales minus our variable expenses. So once we have our contribution margin, we have that to see, okay, here are our fixed expenses. This is how much we have to cover them. What's ever left over then is gonna be our net operating income. So we can approach this in a variety of ways, but in this case, what we're showing is the sales, variable expenses, 
and contribution margin can be expressed on a per unit basis. If racing bicycles sells an additional bicycle, $200 additional contribution margin will be generated to cover fixed expenses and profit. So a bicycle minus their variable expenses gives us $200 for each additional bicycle. Make sense? Each month, the racing bicycle company has to generate at least $80,000 in contribution margin just to break even. That's not to make a profit, it's just to break even which is the sale level of sales at which profit is zero, okay? So they know this is how much they've got to sell in order to just break even. Everything on top of that for the contribution margin is gonna be bonus. If RBC sells 400 units in a month, then it will break even. So 400 units is their break-even point. But you know they want to do better than that. If RBC sells one more bike, so instead of 400 breaking even, a 401, then it's got a net operating income of 200 bucks. We do not need to prepare an income statement to estimate profits at a particular sales volume. Simply, we can multiply the number of units sold above the break even by the contribution margin per unit. So each additional unit, of course, has their variable expenses. So the sales of that additional unit less their variable expenses is the contribution margin. So once we hit break even, the number of sales times that contribution margin is going to be our profit. Okay? So if RBC sells 430 bikes, which is 30 above the, the break even, 30 times 200 a unit, they're gonna make $6,000 in net income that month. The contribution format income statement can be expressed in the following equation, profit, is gonna equal sales minus the variable expenses minus our fixed expenses. So here you see 401 bicycles, our sales is 200,500. Our variable cost are 300 bucks a bike, 12300. So our contribution margin that available for our fixed expenses is 80,200. Less our fixed expenses of 80 give us our net operating income. This equation can be used to show the, whoops, the profit earned if it sells 401 bikes. Oh my goodness. Um, notice the answer of 200 mirrors our earlier solution. Of course it does, because we knew the break even was 400 units. Okay. When a company has only one product, we can further refine this equation by seeing profit equals sales minus variable expenses, the sales being the quantity sold times the selling price, Q, quantity, P, price, minus variable expenses, Q sold times the variable expenses per unit, minus our fixed expenses. So the equation can be used to show the $200 profit the bike company earns if it sells 401 bikes. 
price times quantity minus variable price cost times quantity less our fixed expenses. The simple profit equation is unit contribution margin is going to be your selling price per unit minus your variable expense per unit, price minus variable, gives us our unit contribution margin. Okay, so basically, we can say our unit contribution margin can be the amount per unit times the quantity we sold minus our variable expenses. We're just, it's the same stuff, we're just formatting it in a different manner per item. Now, we know profit can be price plus quantity minus variable cost per, you know, times quantity. Or another way we just say it is unit contribution margin times the quantity minus our fixed expenses. So what we're doing is trying to break it down per unit. Okay, let's look at this exercise. The effect of changes in sales volume on net operating income. Worley Corporation's contribution format income statement for the most recent month is shown below. We see our sales of 10,000 units, 350,000, and per unit, that's 35 bucks. We see our variable expenses of 200,000 and per unit, that is 20 bucks. Our contribution margin is 150,000, but per unit, it's 15 bucks. Our fixed expenses are 135,000, which shows our net operating income to be 15,000. So with number one here, what would be the revised net operating income per month if the sales volume increases by $100? Let's just look at that one. Right now, the net operating income is at 15,000. But if we increase it by 100 units times that 15 contribution margin, what's it gonna change? So if here, the original net income, operating income is 15,000. If we add 100 more units at 15 bucks a unit, our new operating income is going to be 16,500. Got it? Now, what would be the new operating income if our volume decreases by 100 units? Then we would show our 15,000. We would subtract. 100 units at our contribution margin of 15 to show our new net operating income of 13,500. What would happen if the sales volume is at 9,000 units? We break even. Okay, how's everyone doing? Okay, now we're gonna look at a cost volume profit graph. 
and a profit graph. The relationship among revenue, cost, profit, and volume can be expressed graphically by preparing a CVP graph, cost, volume, profit graph. Racing Bicycle developed contribution margin income statements at zero units sold, 200 units sold, 400 units sold, and 600 units sold. We're gonna take this info and put it into a graph. So you see at zero units sold, we still have our fixed expenses. At 200 units sold, we're at a net operating loss of 40,000. Our break even here is at 400. And our um, net operating income profit at 600 units would be 40,000. So to prepare the CVP graph, unit volume is expressed on the horizontal line. Dollars get expressed on the vertical line. So the total fixed expenses we know to be 80,000 bucks here. And then we take different sales volumes and from those sales volumes, we can plot the different expenses, fixed and variable, and basically we see the break even where the fixed expenses line intersects here with the dollar. So from here on out, it's all profit. Now you can take various sales volumes and plot the points representing total sales. You basically just draw the line through the various data points. So here's at zero. Here are your different sales. Here show your various total expenses and here again is your fixed expense. Whoops, let me see what I, I did that one. The break even is going to be where your 400 units and your dollar sales come together here. Okay. You can do it even easier here just the profit graph shows the number of bicycles sold here and your profit. So at 500 bicycles, there's a $20,000 profit. Where the profit is zero is where you're only gonna just sell 400 bicycles. So here we go. Carlick Enterprises distributes a single product whose selling price is 24 bucks per unit and variable expenses $18 per unit. The company's monthly fixed expenses is 24,000. We're gonna prepare the cost volume profit graph for the company up to a sales volume of 8,000 units. And we're gonna to try to look and see where the break even point is. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw a line parallel to the volume axis to represent the total fixed expenses, which in this case is 24,000. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is draw that um, horizontal line. Then we're going to look at volume of sales and plot the points representing our total expenses. Combine it both fixed and the variable. 
at the activity level you've selected, we'll use the sales level at 8,000 units. So at 8,000 units, we know our fixed are gonna be 24,000, but our variables 144,000. So we'll plot where the expense it shows 168,000 at those 8,000 units. Choose some volume of sales and plot the point representing total sales. So we'll plot the cost, we'll plot the sales. Again, the break-even point is where the contribution margin is going to equal the fixed cost. So here you see where the fixed costs are. Here at 4,000 units, this is where you're going to break even. You've got your, your cost and your sales intersecting here to break even. That's our break even mark, okay? You see, if we sold 6,000 units, here's where our sales is and here's where our cost is. Jeffrey Enterprises distributes a single product whose selling price is $16 per unit and the variable expenses are at 11 per unit. The company's fixed expenses are 16,000 per month. Prepare a profit graph for the company up to a sales vo sale volume of 4,000 units. Estimate the company's break even point in unit sales using your profit graph. So We've got 16,000 a month fixed, the, contrib the um, variable cost $11 per unit, sales are at 16 per unit. So we can figure out the break even by taking the contribution margin times a certain quantity to minus our fixed expenses of 16,000. So in this scenario, we show that our break even, here's our sales volume, here's our costs. So our break even here is at like 30, 200, okay? Estimate the company's break even using your profit graph, looking at the graph, you see 3,200 units. Now we can use the contribution margin ratio to compute changes in contribution margin with the net operating income as a result of sales volume. Here, the contribution margin as a percentage of sales, we call it the contribution margin ratio. We take that by the contribution margin divided by sales. So if the contribution margin is 80,000 and the sales are at 200,000, then we know the ratio is 40%. Okay, what's available for fixed expenses per unit. For each dollar increase in sales results in a total contribution margin increase of 40 cents. So if we take our contribution margin per unit, Divide it by the selling price per unit. We're still coming up with the same thing, 40%. Okay. Now, what makes up contribution margin? Sales minus variable expenses. So the variable expense ratio is going to be the difference 
If the contribution margin is 40%, we know our sales is that our variable expense ratio is going to be 60%. So variable expense ratio is again the variable expense divided by the sales. In this case, it's 60%. Remember, the contribution margin ratio and the variable expense ratio are going to equal 100%, right? They're related to each other. So if the bike company increases sales from 400 units, which is the break even, up to 500 units, the contribution margin will increase by 20,000, which is the extra 50,000 that those additional 100 bikes will bring in times the contribution margin of 40%, right? 100,000. Let's look at this one, guys. Coffee Clatch is an espresso stand in a downtown office building. The average selling price of a cup of coffee is 149. And the average variable expense per the cup is 36 cents. The average fixed expense per month is $1,300. An average of 2,100 cups are sold each month. What is the contribution margin ratio for coffee clatch? I want everyone to attempt this, okay? Would y'all come up with what's the CM ratio? B a dollar forty nine divided or minus the thirty six cents divided by a dollar forty nine. That's a good contribution margin. Now the relationship with profit and the CM ratio can also be expressed by. CM ratio times sales minus our fixed expenses. Okay, so if we come, if we know our CM ratio times the sales amount total, that will give us our contribution margin minus our fixed expenses. Okay. Then we take the contribution margin cost of 100 minus our 80 in fixed, then gives us our profit. How about this one, guys? Last month, when Holiday Creations sold 50,000 units, total sales were 200,000. Total variable expenses were 120,000. And fixed expenses were 65,000. So 50,000 units 
at 120 variable expenses, you could figure out the variable expense to come up with your contribution margin, right? So what is the company's contribution margin ratio? 200,000 minus the 120 gives us 80,000. 80,000 divided by the sales means our contribution margin is at 40%. Got it? What is the estimated change in operating income if it can increase sales volume by 250 units and total sales by 1,000? Well, you take the sales times the contribution margin, you can see how much it's going to add to operating income. Sales divided by the number of units gives us the selling price per unit. If we increase the units by 250, we're gonna have new unit sales of 50,250. So what happens with the company's operating income if it can increase the sales volume by 250 units and the total sales is gonna go up a thousand? So, it goes from 50,000 to 50,000 to 50. It goes, the sales go from 200,000 to 200, 1,000. The variable expenses go from 120 to 120,600, which gives us our contribution margin. It went up $400 and our net operating income also went up 400 bucks because our fixed costs are remaining constant. How are you guys doing? Okay. Okay. So we're gonna look at how all this is playing together. What is the profit impact if RBC can increase unit sales up 40 from 500 to 540 by increasing the monthly advertising budget by 10,000? So, I mean, we wish that just sales would come out of nowhere, but there's usually a, some cause and effect, okay? So we are wanting to up an expense by 10,000, assuming or hoping we will increase our sales by 40 units. Will it benefit us? Well, look what happened, guys. Even though our sales did increase, that additional fixed cost couldn't support the sales increase. So would we want to do that? These are the kind of decisions that managers make. All based on estimates, of course. But in this case, sales increased, but our net operating income did decrease. Now you can do it by an incremental analysis saying contribution margin increases 40 units at 200 bucks. So we know our contribution margin goes up 8,000, but that fixed expense was 10. So it lowers our net operating income. Let's look at changes in variable cost with the sales margin. So what's the profit impact if RBC can use higher 
quality raw materials, thus it's going to increase our variable costs by $10 a unit to generate an increase in unit sales from 500 to 580. So we're not adding fixed expenses here. We're basically increasing our variable costs by lowering our contribution margin, hoping that volume alone is gonna help benefit us, our net profit. So what happens here? Our variable expenses are going up by increasing 80 units, it basically increases our sales. The unit price stays the same. It does increase our variable costs, but our contribution margin is higher. Okay? Better quality, they're selling more is the assumption here. And ultimately it's increasing our net operating income. So in this example, if we change fixed costs, selling price and sales volume, what if the profit impact, if the company cuts its selling price by 20 bucks a unit, if it increases its advertising by 15,000 a month, and if sales go up 150 units per month, so here is the original. In this case, it's reducing its sales price by 20 bucks a, month, a unit, but the units are at 650 sold versus 500. The variable expenses are gonna be um, the same per unit, but look how our contribution margin increased because we think we're gonna sell more because we're lowering the price. We ultimately make more money, don't we? Do you see these are the questions that this kind of managerial accounting gives managers the ability to make? So what is the profit impact of RBC if they pay a five $15 sales commission per bike sold instead of paying salespersons flat salaries that currently total 6,000 a month. And as a result of that, unit sales increase to 575 bikes. So our variable costs are gonna go up 15 bucks um, a bike, but our fixed costs are going to go down 6,000. So you see here, our variable costs went up 15 bucks a bike, but our fixed costs went down. Would, is this something you'd want to do? Well, it definitely looks profitable, doesn't it? If RBC has an opportunity to sell 150 bikes to a wholesaler without disturbing sales to other customers or fixed expenses, what price would it quote to the wholesaler if it wants to increase monthly profits by $3,000? Well, won't we come up with a contribution margin? times the, uh, if we want to increase our profits by $3,000, that divided by our 150 bikes needs to be our contribution margin, doesn't it? So we would have to sell it. We would need to have a contribution margin of 20 bucks per bike our variable cost per bike is 300, so we'd have to sell each bike for 320. So 100 bikes, if we sold them at 320, after our variable cost, we would end up with a $3,000 increase in operating income. 
How are you guys doing? How are you online? You guys okay? Data for Herman Corporation shows our selling price per unit, our variable expenses, and our contribution margin. So you see, if the variable expense is 70% of the sales price, the contribution margin is going to be 30. They let us know that our fixed expenses are 30,000 per month, and the company is selling 2,000 units per month. How much will net operating income increase or decrease per month? if the monthly advertising budget increased by 5,000. The monthly sales volume increases by 100 units and the total monthly sales increase by $9,000. Okay, so let's just look. If it goes up 100 units, they're telling us our monthly sales is going to go up $9,000, which means we're selling it for 90 bucks a unit, right? Which means our variable expenses are 70% of our sales price, right? So here are our current sales. It's going to go up by 9,000 if we increase our fixed expenses by $5,000. Is it gonna benefit us? No, wouldn't benefit us. Now, here's the one we had here, the, addition, the alternative one. The alternative for number two, is we could just take the 9,000 times our 30% contribution margin, because we know if variable 70%, the contribution margin's 30%. So here we can see, we can break it down and say, okay, the extra, we're gonna have an increase in contribution margin of 2,700, but that cost of 5,000 doesn't make it. What if this company uses higher quality components that increase the variable expense by two bucks per item and increase unit sales by 10%? So we know the contribution margin is going to decrease, right? Because we're adding to our variable expenses. So the contribution margin is going to go now to 25 bucks a unit from where it was at at $27 a unit. So our expected contribution margin with a higher quality 2,000 units increase the unit sales by 10%. So we're now selling 110%. 25 bucks per unit means our sales will be 55,000 versus the way it was, was at 54,000. So in this case, maybe it's worth it. So in this case, the operating income would go up $1,000. Break even point. So in this case, we can figure out what the unit sales and the dollar sales have to be to break even. Here are in dollars, here is per unit, and here's our contribution margin ratio. So if we get 40% per 
per unit, we can then figure out how many items we need to sell in order to cover our fixed expenses. So profit is zero, contribution margin is 200 a unit times the number, the quantity minus our fixed expenses. Here you see, we need 80,000 is our fixed expenses divided by our contribution margin per unit means we need to come up with 400 units. Okay. The formula method is a, a shortcut. It centers on the idea of each unit sold provides a certain amount of contribution margin that helps cover the fixed expenses. So you can do it in units, you can do it in dollar sales. Suppose RBC wants to compute the sales dollars required to break even and earn a target profit of zero. So there's that equation method and formula methods. We can take our profit times our contribution margin ratio of 40% times sales minus 80,000, which are our fixed expenses to show we would need sales of 200,000. So guys, write down these equations so you have them on hand. This one, the equation method profit equals the CM ratio times the sales minus your fixed expenses. Now we can use this formula method. This one is, is the equation method. We can use the formula method to calculate the dollar sales of break even by taking the fixed expenses, divide that by the contribution margin ratio. Different ways to slice the same come up with the same end result. Let's look at this one. Or did we do this one yet? No, I don't think we did this break even dollar in sales. Coffee Clatch is an espresso stand in a downtown office building. The average selling price of a cup of coffee is $1.49 and the variable expense per cup is 36 cents. The average fixed expense per month is $1,300. An average of 2,100 cups are sold each month. What is the break even dollar sales? I'm gonna give you a minute to work on this while I run to the restroom.
Anyone come up with it? B. B. Anyone else have an answer? Would it be A? Would it be A? What do you guys say online? A would not be right because you've got variable expenses to cover to break even, right? B is right. We take our fixed expenses, divide that by a contribution margin ratio of 75.8% to come up with our sales price, our, our number of dollars of sales. Coffee Clutch, the average selling price is $1.49, variable 36. The average fixed expense is 13. An average number of 2,100 cups are sold each month. What is the break even sales per in units? How are you guys going to do that one? Come on online, guys. What do y'all say? What's your numbers? I have you have 872 cups. Anyone online? We've got our fixed expenses of 1300 divided by our variable, our contribution margin per cup of $1.13 gives us 1,150 cups we need to sell in order to break even. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense, guys? <laughs> hey. Moro Products distributes a single pro product, a woven basket selling $15 per unit with variable expenses of $12 per unit. The company has $4,200 in fixed expenses. So the contribution margin per unit is three bucks, right? Calculate the company's break even point in unit sales. 4,200 divided by three bucks per month per unit would be 1,400 baskets. Does that make sense how we're figuring that? Then in dollars, if we know we have to sell 1400 baskets and they go for 15 bucks a piece, we need to sell 2100. Hmm. 
Okay, now if the company's fixed expenses increased by 600 bucks, again, we know we get three bucks per unit and contribution margin, then how many more baskets do we need to um, sell? Well, the additional baskets would be 600 divided by three bucks per unit, right? Or 200 additional baskets. Make sense, guys? Now, the company's fixed expenses did increase by 600 bucks. What would it be in dollar sales? 1,600 baskets times 15 a basket gives us our new sales. How are you doing? I know we're plugging along, but guys, I think the best way to learn this stuff is exercise, example, example, example. That's how I learn. And I'm figuring that's how everyone learns. Maybe not, but now, how do we figure out the level of sales to achieve a desired profit? So, Profit is going to be the unit contribution margin times the volume minus our expenses. So if we want a $100,000 profit and we know the contribution margin is 200 a unit and we know our fixed expenses, we just have to come up with the missing number of units. In this case, if we want a $100,000 profit and we know the contribution margin 200 times Q and we've got our fixed expenses, we just create an equation where 200 times Q equals 80,000, or excuse me, 20,000. Then we bring the $200 over, divide it, to come up with our 900 units. The formula method uses the following equation. Unit sales to attain the target profit is gonna be our 100,000 plus our fixed expenses Divided that, divide that by our contribution margin per unit. So if we want to make 100,000 and our fixed expenses are 80, and we know our contribution margin per unit is 200, we got to sell 900 units. We can do it using dollar sales, 900 units times the sales price. In this way, we're using a contribution margin ratio. 100,000 profit times our 40% of sales minus our fixed expenses. So we basically are dividing this by 40% to come up with our sales amount. Again, we can take dollar sales to obtain the profit by taking our target profit of 100 plus our fixed, dividing that by our contribution margin ratio. Okay, guys, let's do another problem here. Coffee Clatch is an espresso stand in a downtown office building selling 
cups of coffee for about 49 with variable cost of 36 cents each. Average fixed expense, 1300. Using the formula method, determine how many cups of coffee would have to be sold to attain target profits of 2,500 per month. Okay, I'm gonna give you a minute to try to do this. Tell me what any when you're ready, tell me. Anyone? You know how to do it? Oopsie. I'm sorry, I'm making a mess. You did it bad too. Would it be A? Awesome. Target profit plus fixed expenses, divide that by the contribution margin, 3,363 cups.
Now, how about this one? The sales dollars.3,800 by the ratio, 5,013. Now, Lynn Corporation has a single product whose selling price is 120 per unit and whose variable expense is 80 bucks per unit. The company's monthly fixed expense is 50,000 Calculate the unit sales needed to attain a target profit of 10,000 and calculate the dollar sales needed to attain a target profit of 15,000. So if we want to come up with unit sales, our profit is 10 equals the contribution margin times the quantity minus our fixed. So the profit's gonna equal 10,000 Q minus 50,000. So 10,000 plus 50 here, 60,000 divided by 40 bucks comes up with our number of units. And to figure that in sales, 1,625 units times the selling price per unit gives us the number. Now, margin of safety. What is that? It's the excess of budgeted or actual sales dollars over a break-even volume. It's the amount by which sales can drop before we get losses. The higher the margin of safety, the lower the risk. So let's look at RBC and figure out their margin of safety. Total sales minus break-even sales. So if the bike company has actual sales of 250 and we know break-even is 200,000, in this case, the margin of safety would show us 50,000. RBC's margin of safety can be expressed as 20% of sales, 50,000 divided by 250. That just gives them a cushion. Margin of safety is a good example of a cushion. Or we can show it in terms of um, the 50,000 margin of safety divided by the number of uh, the cost per bike to come up with a hundred bikes would be the margin of safety. So what's the margin of safety here? Give you a minute to look.
Okay, anyone come up with an answer? If an average of 2,100 cups are sold each month, the average fixed expense per month are 1,300. The break even 2,100 minus the break even, um, and we came up with that, a while back means 950 cups would be the margin of safety. Cost structure. Each company can decide the balance between fixed costs and variable costs. Now there are advantages to both. F higher fixed costs can be scary in tough times. Okay, they can be scary in tough times because when the when um, sales go really low and you've got a bunch of fixed costs, boy, it's a it's tough to make it work. But in good times, it can be really good because you're going to make a lot of profit. High variable costs are safe in downtimes, but not necessarily give you the profit you want in really good times. An advantage of a high fixed cost structure is income's going to be higher in good years compared to companies with lower fixed costs. But this is a huge disadvantage, guys. A disadvantage of high fixed cost is income will be lower in bad years and you want to keep surviving. And when you've got fixed overhead, you got to pay the bills. So companies with low fixed costs enjoy a better stability in both years, but the profits aren't going to be as great. Every company has its various cost structures. Molander Corporation is a distributor of a sun umbrella used at resort hotels. Data concerning the next month's budget appears below. We've got the selling price, the variable expenses, the fixed expenses, and the unit sales per month. What is the company's margin of safety and then margin of safety as a percent of sales? So we know the margin of safety based on a thousand units, less our break even, shows our margin of safety is at $7,500. In a percentage of sales, we would show that that is 25% of our sales. Okay. We take our margin of safety, divide that by our sales. Got it? Okay. Now we're talking about operating leverage. So this is a measurement of how net income can fluctuate to a percentage change of sales. So any given level of sales, how the percent change of sales volume is going to affect ultimately with products, pro profits. We figure out our degree of operating leverage by taking our contribution margin 
and dividing it by our net income. So if we go back to our bike place and we show our sales, our variable expense, but our contribution margin here is at 100,000 and our operating income is at 20. Gives us a degree of operating leverage for five. With that five operating leverage, if RBC increases its sales by 10%, the net operating income is gonna increase by 50%, five times 10. Percent increase in profits will go up 50%. Meaning if we increase our sales by 10%, from 250,000, we add another 25,000 to that. Then our contribution margin is going to go up to 110,000, which increases our contribution margin here. But look at our sales. They went up 50%. How about this one, guys? I'm going to give you a minute. Try it. What y'all come up with? If we have sales of thirty-one twenty-nine less the variable expenses, our contribution margin here is two thousand three hundred and seventy-three divided by our operating income makes our operating leverage at two point two one. Now, if sales increase by 20%, how much net operating does net operating income increase? We would show 20% times the 2.21 means our growth in profit will be 44.2%. You can figure that out by looking at 1,073 and then the 1548. And you can basically show the difference, like the 400 some dollar increase, divide that by our increase, our operating income. Okay, now structuring sales. Usually commissions happen, um, and it can be a variable expense, but 
you know, it's all a matter of figuring out or that do those commissions really help increase sales like we saw in the previous example. If pipeline produces two types of surfboards, the XR7 and the turbo, the XR7 sells for $100 and generates a contribution margin of 25 bucks a unit. The turbo sells for 150 and it earns a contribution margin of 18. The sales force at pipeline is compensated based on sales commissions. If you're on the sales force, you would push hard to sell the turbo, even though the XR7 earns a higher contribution margin because you want to sell the bigger product. To eliminate this type of conflict, commissions should be earned based on contribution margin than just the selling price. That makes sense? So Ingberg installs Lonsod, the company's most recent, recent contribution format is shown below. What is the company's degree of operating leverage? The contribution margin, divide that by our operating income, shows the operating leverage. Then they say, what happens if we have a 5% increase in unit sales? They, that should result in a 24% increase in net operating income. So you see the 4.8 times the 5% shows how much our net income should increase. See how we use that operating leverage? <clears throat> Verify it. <clears throat> so if we initially had 10,000 of income, now because of this change, we have 12,400 of income, which means it went up 2,400 divided by the original 10,000 income we've got a 24% increase. Then when you have multi-products, you've got what we call a sales mix. Different products have different selling prices, contribution margin, and structures, how much is variable, what is fixed. When a company sells more than one product, break-even analysis gets a little more difficult. So here we're looking at the bike company selling not just bikes, but also carts. So we've got a section for the bike contribution margin. And the slot for the carts contribution margin. And then we've got a total. So here We've got a contribution margin of 100,000. The carts, we have a contribution margin of 165,000. Now our total, as you see, when we bring the two together along with the volume, we've got an ending contribution margin of 48.2 because the carts are giving us a better margin here. So uh, RBC provides the following information. So we've got our sales mix, carts are selling more, bicycles 250, carts 300, which totals our, our costs. We're doing the same thing. We just have to add different products together to come up with our figures. Dollar sales to break even, we've got fixed expenses divided by our contribution margin ratio. So the 170 divide this 48.2 shows what we need to sell to break even. Keeping this same mix, okay? We wanna keep the same mix of sales. So, Here's a multi-product break-even. I think we're almost done, guys. Lucido Products markets two computer games. 
the claim jumper, and the makeover. A contribution format income statement shows the claim jumper with the sales, the makeover with the sales, and the contribution margins here. What is the overall contribution margin ratio for the company? Contribution margin ratio 30,000 divided by 100,000 would be 30%, okay? What is the overall break even in sales? Our total fixed expenses divided by the contribution margin ratio gives us 80,000. Verify the overall break even point for the company by structuring a contribution format income statement showing the appropriate level of sales for the two products. To construct it, we have to determine the relative sales mix. We have to know what percent is claim jumper adding to the pot versus makeover. So we see here, excuse me, claim jumper is showing making 16,000. No. Claim jumper. I think I had these backwards. 56. Makeover. This is right. Makeovers, 56,000 divided by um, what we show the original dollars. And then our claim jumper divided by our 20,000. I'm just seeing where that number came from 50. It's probably on the previous slide there. Um, so basically what we need to show are the variable expenses associated with each of these products. Again, break even analysis. If our fixed expenses are 183,000, 750 per month, we see the breakdown by the flight dynamic product and the sure shot, 400,000. So 150 divided by 400 would be that ratio of flight dynamic to the total sales. 250 to 400 would show that ratio. Prepare a contribution format income statement for the company as a whole, carry contributions to one decimal place. So we show the breakdown of total sales for flight dynamic, variable and contribution margin. We do the same for sure shot. And we see overall the contribution margin with this mix is 52.5%. <clears throat> What's the company's break even dollar? A take the 183,750 divided by 52.5% gives us our break even. If sales increase by 100,000 a month, how much would you expect the monthly net operating income to increase? 100,000 times the 52.5% contribution margin means our sales, our operating income would go up 52,500. Assuming that's all, we're not adding fixed expenses. Okay, makes sense. Menlo Company distributes a single product. The company's sales and expenses for last month Sales of 450 less our variable expenses gives us our contribution margin. We see our net operating income. What is the monthly break even point in unit sales and in dollar sales? And then without resorting to computations, what's the total contribution margin <clears throat> at the break even? How many units would have to be sold each month to attain a profit of 90,000? Compute the company's margin of safety 
and what is the company's contribution margin ratio. So the monthly break even is going to be the fixed expenses, which we're going to divide by 18. So we know the $30 minus the variable expenses are 12. The net is the contribution margin, 18. We're going to divide 216 by 18, divided by 18 to give us 12,000 units or $360,000 in dollars. Make sense? Without resorting to computations, what's the total contribution margin at the break even point? 216,000. The contribution margin is equal to the fixed expenses at the break even point. Sales minus variable gives us our contribution margin. How many units would have to be sold each month to attain a target profit of 90,000? We're gonna take our profit plus our fixed, divide that by our contribution margin to come up with 17,000 units. Makes sense? Compute the company's margin of safety sales minus our break even our, our expenses gives us our margin of safety here of 90,000 or in a percent 20% of sales what's the company's contribution margin ratio it's going to be 18 divided by 30 60%. Expected contribution margin, 300,000. What's it currently at? 270. It would increase our contribution margin by 30,000. Okay? Any question? Guys, there's a lot in this chapter, but it's really not hard. Keep an, a sheet beside you showing the different formulas. That's what's going to help you guys. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and turn off this recording.